Welcome. Well, uh, many things have been happening, as some of you are aware. Unfortunately, Shadow Dancer at the moment can't see these videos. She has big problems with her computer. Now, we believe it could be uh, it could be a virus. Well, Adrian can do this by remote control, but that's completely, of course, up to Shadow Dancer. Okay, enough of this rubbish. So, how far have you gone? With these studies. I know I, I've given you quite a lot to work on, but I am now con thinking there is so many scare things going on um, to scare people and I, I, I firmly believe this is all part of uh, for want of a better word, New World Order propaganda. Rubbish. Okay, enough of that. Uh, we have been working hard on several projects. Some of you are aware of the new group that we have opened. And you'll find this fairly weird to start with because it's not Reiki. Um, I'm talking about pranic energy. Now, what was I going to talk about, Adrian? I don't know. See? You, you didn't tell me what you were going to talk about. I didn't know what I was going to talk about. Got any ideas, love? She's gone quiet. She's either fallen asleep or she's died. Oh, she's died and made the place a bit smelly after a while. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, you're all welcome. Our full moon ritual was extraordinary by all accounts. And we're looking forward to a couple of you that are deciding to come over to Ireland to see us. This should be a special time. We'll even hide little buffalo so you won't, you, you won't contaminate you or frighten you. Thanks. <laughs> He's done a great job. Now, we're dealing with astral worlds quite a lot lately. And there seems to be a lot of confusion. Well, there should be no confusion, really. The astral world functions in this world. Um, point of reference. If this world was destroyed, <laughs> we'll call it Earth 2 for a better play, for a better name, will remain as it has always remained. So it functions in the same, occupies the same space as what you do. It isn't it some hairy fairy place up in the sky, nor is it stuck down under the ground. It's around you. Now I put on several, several explanations on different sites, how to see the aura, uh, Dark Raven one is put in Astral Travel. I put in a bit more in Numerology. I could go on and on. We've been filling up the sites and concentrating on the sites. Some of them have got very lax and they needed a bit of boost. Most of our healing works near enough instantaneous because of what we're taught and what the masters do when they're working through us. I have been working on uh, Earthwalker because he, he had a few problems and they had to be dealt with. Why did I pick up that part? I don't know. Don't ask questions. 
Um, so is healing like uh, Katrina? Is it Katrina? It is Katrina. We'll continue automatically. You must understand crystals. You must get a deeper understanding of crystals. Crystals are living things. Everything on this earth vibrates at a frequency. If it vibrates, it moves. If it's movement, it is life. This is, um, this is basically a science thing. If there is movement, there is always life. Energy is never static. It never stays still. Your aura ex can extend beyond this earth. The frequency of your aura can extend. Um, it's like if you have a piece of paper and use watercolours and you put down a nice blue, say. While it's still wet, right beside it, you put down a nice yellow. They will fuse into each other. They'll run into each other. And so does the aura. And it's not static. A lot of people review the aura. They think it's just a set colour. It doesn't happen that way. It spins. It spins around the body. And it's different colours matching up with the kakas. Your organs are all interrelated. There is more power coming from the heart chakra than it's coming from your brain. Strange. It's not just a pump. This has been scientifically proven. The energies have been measured. So therefore, the love vibration is very, very important. For it will reach out to others, whether you're aware of it or not. I also want to come to wands. These are very important. They're not just pieces of stick you're holding in your hands. They transmit and amplify your... Uh, what kind of word? Amplifies what you desire or what you desire to change. Some wands have different aspects. They have different abilities. Like the Druids say that they prefer ones made of oak and ash because this is a sacred, uh, a sacred wood. Never, ever, ever pick up a piece of wood and say, yeah, I'm going to make a wand out of this. My sweet ones, it is not live. It's like the water thing. It's not live, it's dead. So what do you do? You approach the tree that you wish to make your wand. By the way, I have um, a video on how to make wands on one of the sites, <clears throat> on one of the groups. Don't ask me which one now, I couldn't tell you. I think it's um, psychic lessons, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, the wood must come from the trunk of the tree. Why? Well, if you don't cut the wood from the trunk, which is live wood. And when it is cut normally, the tree will withdraw its energy or its life force from that piece of wood. So you must ask permission from the tree and always, always, always give something in return, whether it's water or, or a crystal or whatever. Give something in return for that piece of wood. Then ask the tree, when you receive affirmation that you can use this, then cut, you may cut the branch. If possible, seal it. Uh, yeah, I think a Adrian is making strange signals to me saying I got, I got to zonk off. Remember these words, my friend. 
I wish you all well. Namaste. Om Shanti.